Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce. So glad to be with you today. I'm with another one of my very special friends, Tracy Lewis. And you've been hearing from her husband, Louis Lewis, John Lewis, we call Louis. But anyway, we, and you, you, we were listening to him telling his testimony the other day about how, you know, what happened in their marriage and how they divorced and they remarried and he was on drugs and I mean, you know, alcohol, the whole bit, he was addicted. And yet, you know, and all how, how all that worked out. We heard from his vantage point. Now, what we want to talk to, to you today about is Tracy's vantage point, the sweet wife <laughs> <laughs> that stood by faith for him. Amen. Tracy, how did this all begin with him? Well, um, you know, I met Louie in 1988. Um, I moved to Hopkinsville from Chicago, Illinois. And so we started dating about four years on and off. And, um, you know, I didn't, I knew what he was about. And so I was really not interested. And, but he continued to um, chase me. Yes, he did very <laughs> much so and would not leave me alone. Mm -hmm. And which is fine now, but um, for about four years, and after that four years, we decided that we would move in together. Mm -hmm. And so we did. And, um, you know, and during this time, I started going to church just here and there. And, um, and I just started feeling really guilty about living with him. And so I decided or asked him, could we get married? Mm -hmm. And, of course, he really wanted to get married. And so we did. But the problem with the drugs and stuff, I mean, because I was doing drugs too. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but not as bad, you know, as um, aggressive, maybe. Mm -hmm. But um, so it got a little bit more intense. And um, so we got married, and we were married for about five years. And I just really started giving the Lord my life, you know, a little bit at a time. You know, because I was still going to, uh, going to the bars with him, not drinking, but just being there, trying to watch over him and so forth. And it really got to the point where I just wasn't interested in that anymore. And so... Um, I asked him one day, I said, Louie, are you willing? Because I knew that God could do anything, mm -hmm. and God can change him, mm -hmm. but he had to be willing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he looked right at me and said no. And it, wow. it broke my heart. It really did. <laughs> I guess. So I decided to move out for a couple of weeks. You know, maybe everything would be okay, and he would decide that he wanted Jesus too, but it didn't work out like that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I moved out, and uh, we were, um, then I divorced him soon after that, and um, we were divorced for two years. And uh, then one day, I'm sitting in the choir, and here he comes. <laughs> Into the church. He was in the church with his Bible, uh -huh. and it freaked me out because I was like, oh. You what thought it he? was all over. <laughs> I did. Uh -huh. We had cut ties and didn't uh -huh. really talk to each other or anything, and um so, but we started talking, and, and he was there searching for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that sort of gave me a spark, but not really you wanting to. You were too convinced. <laughs> well, I wasn't ready to trust him yet. And so, um, but as time went on, I could tell that something was going on, and something was different. And uh, I was in revival one night, mm -hmm. on about middle of the week on Wednesday. And he asked me, he said, um, during the invitation, uh, you want to go and pray for our relationship, and I was like, mm, okay, you know, <laughs> so we go forward, and, um, and we cried, and, you know, and, and uh, I didn't know what was going on with him, you know, I got a phone call later, and I didn't know who that guy was, but he sounded like Louie, and, <laughs> and, um, didn't sound like the same person you it, knew, though, before, yeah, there was something definitely mm -hmm. different that mm -hmm. happened to him, and uh, so we continued to, uh, to see each other, and we went to a marriage counselor. We were hanging around, and and so um, you know, the Lord convinced me that that He had truly gotten saved, mm -hmm. and that His life was different. And you know, and I I think back now, and and uh, how you know I didn't want to say no to Him when there were so many oppositions against us getting married again. Mm -hmm. But you know, I kept thinking that. Um, some other girl was going to get my Christian husband. <laughs> now, the one you had prayed for. <laughs> yes, I did. You know, during that time that we were divorced and I was in my apartment, I remember the Lord telling me, almost audibly, He said, um, pray for Louie every day. Oh. I 
was like, uh-uh. <laughs> he said, no, pray for Louie every day. And he kept saying that until I finally said, you know what, Lord, I'll, I'll pray for him. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea why. I didn't know what God was up to. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we did remarry, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, spent our honeymoon in Atlanta right. on a mission trip. And we fed the poor, the, um, the homeless. Mm -hmm. And... Um, witnessed to some little children and took fruit to some old people mm -hmm. and really had a good time in the Lord and it really started us out, you know, the way the Lord would have us right. to. Right. That is so great. Yeah. That's such a great story. I love hearing your story. Um, Tracy, you minister in the jail there in Hopkinsville and I think you have a dynamic ministry. I know the reason I know this is because uh, you work with a chaplain. It's also a deputy. Yes. Her name, say, say is uh, Joyce Zander. Yes, Joyce Zander. And she looks just like Joyce Meyer. She does. I <laughs> promise you. She talks like her, too. She does. And mm -hmm. everybody just loves that. And she thinks that the Lord has such a sense of humor to make her mm -hmm. look just like Joyce. <laughs> And they just, she has a great time yeah. with that. Well, she is a great woman of God. I mean, you know, a deputy always makes, causes order. I mean, makes sure that everybody is in order. Mm -hmm. But she's also a chaplain, so she's also a minister. So you all minister, and you're called a minister because you Amen. minister with her. And you send me some of those reports every week called Sunshine Report. And I think that's just such a great <laughs> name. And if you all read my newsletter... Uh, on the liberating secret, you will, and if you if you haven't signed up for it, you need to sign mm -hmm. up for it. And usually, I will give a report from the jail, and it's usually your sunshine report. So it's really great. And you know, I forgot to say that your husband also is a writer, so he's got yes. articles also mm -hmm. in the newsletter. And both of you all attend a Bible study there in Hopkinsville, Mimi Anderson's Bible study. Mm -hmm. Brian Coatney goes there, yes, and Brian, Brian you, first, you met me through Brian, really. Right. Um, Brian invited me to his house, and you were there, and mm -hmm. you gave me the book, um, your book, um, Treasures in Darkness, mm -hmm. and you had signed it for me, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget that you wrote in there, you know, uh, that I was a wonderful expression of Christ, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh my goodness. I've never been told that before, and I didn't really know what it meant mm -hmm. until recently, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it just blessed my heart, and I thought you were the, I was the only one you said that about. <laughs> well, the, everybody thinks that. You know what? God always treats people that way, like yes. you're the only one in the world, and then Amen. we find out, you know, he's God, so he can be that way with everybody. I love that about him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So, but you really are a precious expression oh, of Jesus. You thank really you. are. You shine. Amen. You're the sunshine report. You are your report. <laughs> oh, amen. Well, I do enjoy it. And, you know, I, I love to know that Christ lives in me and mm -hmm. that he's, he's expressing himself through my personality mm -hmm. and how, you know, I can look at other people that way as well. Mm -hmm. And it helps me to love them no matter what their... Um, you know, thing that might bug me about, you know. Mm -hmm. Which often does. It always it does. does. It does. But that isn't the point. No. I mean, we are often bugged in our soul level, so we feel this and feel that, but we know that's just our feelings, and really the real us is Christ living yes. in us, and He is love. So, Amen. therefore, that's really the credentials you have to have to minister to those women in jail. Yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that have happened to you while you've been in, in, in okay. you know, ministering. Okay. Well, you know, I did want to say that uh, Louie and I have now been married nine years. Oh, praise the Lord. And um, that just blesses my heart. And, um, and we minister together, although we're separate. He yes. goes on Sunday night where I go on Thursday. You know, but he really is my inspiration, um, mm -hmm. other than Christ, of course. But in, my flesh, in the flesh and blood, my husband really um, encourages me, and uh, we pray. Uh, every Thursday before I go to jail, I'm scared to death and all nervous, you know, because, you know, it's like, oh, what is God going to do tonight, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but he prays with me, and um, and so, um, anyway, the girls in jail, you know, really just bless my heart because, you know, I feel like the enemy has lied to them yes, probably right. their whole life, yes. and um, they've been abused by the men in their life, maybe mm -hmm. even their mothers or their grandmothers and 
you know, it's just really hard for them to know and to, and, not, and some of them have never even been told that Jesus loves them, mm, you know. Gosh. And so to be able to go in there and um, the opportunity having to have to go in there and to be able to tell, tell them. Tell the story of how, what preceded you going to jail, the thing that happened to you. Okay, you know, um, there was a time when I, at my job, I was at a newspaper, and uh, they didn't have a photographer. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me to go out and, and uh, take pictures, and so I did. And um, the, uh, there was a convict that was there, whom I didn't know him, um, but anyway, so there was a series of events that happened, and he wrote some letters to my work um, to threaten me. Mm -hmm. And so I took him to court and uh, a lot of legal things and he spent some time on my charges and so forth. And uh, so really, I had no desire to go into a prison or into a jail and it really scared me mm -hmm. to a point, you know, but I trusted God enough that he was going to keep me safe. Mm -hmm. And it really wasn't about, you know, this guy. And, and I actually prayed for him and, and I pray to this day and have faith that he will be saved. Mm -hmm. And because um, Jesus loves him just as well. Mm -hmm. And so. But you had a lot of fear in the beginning because of what happened with this man. Yeah. So, I mean, and but, but really and truly, we push past our feeling of fear. And as we walk by faith, then the Lord meets mm -hmm. us right there. And then you knew that was, gonna, that was your calling. Yeah, you know, after I went, you know, and then I realized that there was something that, that came in from, inside of me mm -hmm. and I knew that it didn't have anything to do with with me other mm -hmm. than being obedient and walking through it mm -hmm. because when I went these girls their lives are being changed mm -hmm. and they're being touched and mm -hmm. and I thought well I know that I don't have any power in and mm -hmm. of myself to do that but I know that God can mm -hmm. I thought whoa you know God can really use me and I really wow. started to <laughs> believe that by faith and believe in what the word said and so it just inspires me, and now I have this this passion that just causes me just to to want to minister to these girls and and see God change their lives. Oh my gosh, that yeah. is so that's so amazing. That's you know really when we know the Holy Spirit is in it mm -hmm. is when he he really instead of oh us doing it out of obligation, we're doing it because there's such a passion within us can't not do it. Yes. That's then the Holy Spirit. That's the way I am about the liberating secret. I love yeah. doing the liberating yeah. secret and I teaching. I love that you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and and it comes across. You can't help it. Yeah. You love it. You I love having guests on like you. Oh, I love being here. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Can you tell us maybe some of the stories without really divul divulging the names of some of the people? Mm. Well, you know, um, the very first time I went to jail, there was a friend of mine that was there and I started telling my testimony and actually she knew some of the people that were in my testimony and she validated me that night mm -hmm. you know for being there and what I was mm -hmm. saying was true and I think that that really got the ball rolling mm -hmm. and um, a lot of the girls there respect what I say mm -hmm. because they know that I'm being real with them mm -hmm. you know and I see something in them that they don't see themselves mm -hmm. you know um, and and you know I just love that about God um, it says in um, 2 Corinthians 4, 18, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. And um, I did want to read a poem that, that God put on my heart. And, um, oh, you know, and it is about seeing things that aren't seen because mm -hmm. you know that they are eternal. But, you know, a lot of these women have been abused most mm -hmm. of their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, so I see more than what they can. Yes. And so I feel as if they can see what God sees in them, yes. then, the, then their lives will be changed. Yes, it will. And this is called You Are Beautiful. <laughs> if you could see what I see, then you would see your beauty. Your beauty comes from inside. It's something you just can't hide. I'm not beautiful, you say. You don't even like yourself today. Well, I can see that you've been hurt, punched and kicked around in the dirt. You feel like nobody cares for you, and why should they? I don't know the things that you've done along the way. Oh, I can feel the darkness that swirls around you. It's so thick at times you don't know what to do. The enemy has bound you with fear and pain. You are par paralyzed by those heavy chains. 
and the walls close in so tight. Feeling alone, you search for the light. And you can't believe I'm standing here because all of your life you have dreamed that somehow love would find you. Mm. And now I'm telling you that you are a treasure. You're meant to be loved beyond measure. If you could see, then you would understand why I fall down to my knees and pray you will fall in love with the one who gave the life and blood of his only son so that you could see what I see. And if beauty is in the eye of the beholder, then I am beholding true beauty. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, Tracy, I want, I'm going to put that on our website. Okay. And I want to put your name, and anybody can go to our website, thelibratingsecret.org, and you will see Tracy's poem. I'm going to, have, I'm going to post that there. You might pull it off. That is, that is beautiful. That poem in itself is beautiful. Well, I got that from Isaiah 61, uh, 1 through 3. Can I read that? Yes. Okay. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the account, uh, acceptable year of the Lord in the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they might be glorified. Oh, that is so great. Actually, we use the, those very verses as um, our May conference theme of our May conference last year. Oh, that's <laughs> we right. sure did. Yeah. We sure did. That is actually didn't Jesus quote that when in Luke? I think he did. Yeah. I think he quoted the very thing. It says that was really his calling. Um it's in Luke, which is um mm, here it is. Here it is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the Amen. poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and a, dis a discovering of sight, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Oh. That is that is Jesus's calling, and that is our calling too. Yes, it isn't is. It? You know, just to bring hope to those girls that you know Jesus loves them, no matter how they've been treated their yes. whole life. You know, and I believe if they fall in love with Jesus, the mm -hmm. person of Jesus Christ, yeah. that He will change them. That's right. You know, that and I, right. I'm glad that He's in the restoration business. He just like, sure is. Just like He did my marriage. That's exactly you right, know? <laughs> Tracy. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, your husband said, he said, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are, oh. because He's a new creation. Yes, He is. So God is in the redeeming restoration. Amen reconciliation <laughs> business, Amen. isn't he? Yes, he I mean, is. He is taking broken things. And, oh my goodness, that verse right there that you wrote about beauty for ashes, yes. there's a song called that. Yes. I and I, my friend Debbie Schweitzer in, of in Pennsylvania, their house burned to the ground. Oh. And uh, she, she's a singer. And the Lord gave her that song oh, when they went and saw the ashes. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I was just up there, not just a, um, like last summer. I was just up there. And um, I, I was in her new house, and it is beautiful. Oh, see, the, it, so it was built. The tragedy, those, yeah, that's right. Beauty came from those ashes, right. didn't it? So there's never any hard place that we have, any abusive, hard place. Every one of us have those places. I mean, we've all come from... We all come from dysfunctional families. Yes. You know, everybody thinks, well, most people won't admit it. And I, th <laughs> I think that's what's the problem. We like to be transparent. We like to say what's gone wrong in our life. You know, the Bible's that way. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't cover over bad things that's happened to people. Right. And your husband gave uh, a teaching last time that was fabulous, talking yes. about Moses being a murderer and... David being an adulterer mm -hmm. and Paul being a murderer That's as right. well. And how yeah. God used these men. Yes. You know, so, so oftentimes we think that, you know, su such things 
that we've done, you know, e even when you're an unbeliever mm -hmm. and that God can't forgive you yes. or that he can't use you. Mm -hmm. But that is a lie from That's, the enemy, it is. you know, it is. and it's because we mess up that God loves us. That's right. You know, he already knew that about us, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. He <laughs> did. He did. And, you know, um, I always felt like my mother never loved me. Oh. So, and I know um, she did in her own way. Mm -hmm. And, but she wasn't saved at the time and she had a lot of self-condemnation and self-hatred herself. She took it out on us. So, I know what it feels like a child that feels like that their mother doesn't love them. I say, gosh, you know, if my dad had left home, that wouldn't have been as bad because what a person thinks, if my mother doesn't love me, I'm not worthy to be loved. There's nothing here to love. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt that way. Mm -hmm. But those are the very scars That's that God right. healed. Oh, amen. And for a long time, I was like a victim. Oh, my mother did this and my mother did that. And so many times, we, you know, we're just victims and we don't know how to turn that into God's victory. That's right. But it gets turned when we start seeing the sovereignty of God wow. in all things. That He's the one that even means our scars and wow. our insecurities and fears. Wow. He means that in our life. Yes, He does. That negative is meant to be there because His positive or Himself, who is the positive Amen. of the universe, yes fills up that negative mm -hmm. and makes me know that I'm a whole person and m causes me to know Him and His healing power and His keeping power. Amen. So then you can start praising God for your past. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, because, you know, and I say this, and but never trust a man without a limp. And Whoa, <laughs> that's a good point. What does that mean? Well, you know, I, I always think about Jacob and how mm -hmm. he's wrestled with the angel. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Mm -hmm. Well, what, caught, what happened was that his hip came out of joint. Yes, but, did. you know, the very next day he met with his brother, yes. Esau, whom mm -hmm. he had tricked out of his birthright. Right. And, you know, he thought he was going to be really mad at him, yes. you know, and that he might even kill him. But, you know, he came, he came to him humbled, mm -hmm. you know. And but God did bless him. The angel mm -hmm. did bless him. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think so and many his times his brother didn't kill him. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The twelve tribes of Israel came That's out right. of it. You know, so I think a lot of times, you know, when we have you know, if I went into the jail being all perfect and righteous, do you think mm -hmm. those girls would listen no. to me? No. No, because we're it's like and I've you know, I've thought of this. I mean, it's like being on a director's chair looking down below. Mm. And I thought, Jesus didn't do that. No. He became one of us. Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and so we have to be honest enough and open enough, you know, and vulnerable enough and yeah. transparent enough that people can identify with us. Amen. How can, or we can identify with them and then they can identify with us, you see. Right. Then there, just yesterday I was at a meeting and uh, all of a sudden two doctors came up to me because I had said something that yes. really sparked the spirit inside of them right. and I was it was a spiritual meeting that we went to and they started saying things to me that they this one doctor said I've never told anybody this yeah and so and so it said but you seem so transparent and I said yes that's yeah, right that's, that's right. why people will tell you but let me tell you this Tracy and I know you know that because you don't live with condemnation yourself right. Right. You, you're you not living with the devil's lie of self-condemnation. Thank you, so, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. That's right. So for that reason, you do not transmit that when you talk oh. and you share with other people. So if you're not transmitting that, you see, you're transmitting peace. Yes. And you're transmitting understanding and love, unconditional love. That's right. It is unconditional. It's unconditional right. love, which is Christ himself. That's right. And because of that, people will open up and, and tell you. And so that happens all the time. I bet it happens to it you does. too. It does. It happens to me too. That's right. And you know, and, and God's love is unending. It is. You know? Never and ending. That's right. And you were talking earlier about um, having an addiction. Mm -hmm. And you know, and my husband was addicted to drugs and, and alcohol and so forth. But you know, now he's still a, an addict. You know what he's addicted to? Tell me. Jesus. Yes, he is. <laughs> and it's never ending. And it's so awesome because... 
every day we get into the Word, and, um, and it's not on purpose, like, okay, now we will have Bible study, mm -hmm. you know, but he'll, the Lord will be speaking to him and say, oh, you know what, and then he'll bring something up, and I was like, well, where is that, and, and we'll look at it, and, you know, and, and people said that when we got married again that this was not going to last, and he was substituting, you know, religion for his drugs, and, you know, and the thing is, is that it's not religion. It isn't. And that's why it has lasted. Because it's Christ. It is there Christ. There is a big difference. There is, yes. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> uh, you know what? Your husband still has a 12-step program. You know what it is? Tell me. Jesus, 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 <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, never get tired of that. <laughs> never, never. No. That's so great. It is. It's really wonderful. Oh, I, I'm telling you. And then when you look back, you think, whatever we went through, it was all worth it. I mean, when God restores, then you can look. It's like having a baby. And I know you don't have any children, but you know what you, you That's know. Right. Mm -hmm. It is like that because you think, oh, you labor, labor, labor. And yeah. you prayed, prayed, prayed. I did. And, I did. But the, and, and there was pain. There was a lot of pain. There was. There was a lot of things that happened that caused both of you all pain. But, you see, when God delivers and restores a marriage yes. and brings you back together as a couple, as a ministering team, yes. that's what I love. I, I love that. I do, too. And, you know, and I actually prayed for that. Did you? Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, golly, you know, we've just had a wonderful time. Well, and thank I'm, you for having gonna me. We're going to be doing some more, okay. Tracy. Because I think you and I are an item. I think you so, think too. That? We have a lot in common. Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> this precious woman. If anybody would like to email her, what is your email address? It is hotsunshine at hotmail.com. There you go. <laughs> and also give your husband, Is your would they get your husband's address? Um, his is j Louie at hotmail.com. And if people would like to write them, maybe they have spoken to your heart. I'm sure hey. they have. And uh, if the Holy Spirit through them has spoken to you and you'd like to contact them, you just email them or get on the Liberating Secret, find out my email address, which of course is Sylvia P at the Liberating Secret.com. And, and I'll forward it to, to them. So thank you. These, these precious ones. So I'm just so thankful for you. Amen. And uh, thank you for being with me thank today. You for and asking. thank your husband when you see him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us to, today on The Liberating Secret. And may God richly bless your understanding. And I hope that your heart has really been touched by this couple that has shared their heart with you. I mean, that's how Jesus really catches us, it's in our hearts. It's not so much in our minds. Our minds catch up later. But God's off, always after hearts first. So thank you for joining us on The Liberating Secret, and may God richly bless you. Goodbye. <laughs>